Hey guys, it's July 22nd, 2018, and this day in music history, in 1977, Zeppelin drummer John Bonham was charged with assault after a concert at Oakland Coliseum in California. Bonham and band manager Peter Grant had the help of their bodyguard roughing up a security employee at the venue. After pleading guilty to misdemeanors, the accused settled out of court for $2 million. The Presence Tour would eventually be canceled after Robert Plant's son died a few days later. This day, July 22nd, 1979, keyboard player with Grateful Dead, Keith Godshow, <clears throat> died after being involved in a car accident at age 32. He co-wrote songs with Lowell George of Little Feet and was a member of New Riders of the Purple Sage. Both Little Feet and New Riders are bands worth checking out. I liked them. All right, a uh, couple more this day in music histories. 1983, the police kick off their North American tour in Chicago, supporting their Synchronicity album. And July 22nd, 1995, two REM fans died in Dublin, Ireland at Slane's Castle, drowned in the River Boyne. One was allegedly pushed from a bridge. And in 2001, Paul McCartney lost his wife to cancer on this day, July 22nd. And on this day in 1971, bluegrass country singer Alison Krauss was born. All right, sorry, there's a lot of <clears throat> depressing stuff in there. But uh, Alison Krauss being born was a good uh, positive highlight at the end. All right, the album I'm going to be reviewing tonight, I listened to this in the car today. I haven't heard it in years. And I pulled it out trying to um, pick some albums to review. I remember I liked this one. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. It's called Hey Man. It was uh, released on the Sire record label and uh, released in 1991, but we'll talk about that. Richard was born in 1951 in Plainfield, New Jersey. He got a drum kit when he was seven years old and was an accomplished drummer by the time he was 12. In his teens, he started playing guitar and piano and began writing songs. He was one of the original members of the 1960s group, the Doughboys, who are considered to be a legendary New Jersey rock band. After the breakup of the Doughboys, Richard went solo. He was in his 20s when this happened. And so, yeah, this is his second album under his name, under Richard X. Heyman's name. This is the second one. The first one, I think, was in 1989 or something. Um, yeah, on this album, Richard plays, well, he sings all the vocals, plays all the guitars, the bass, keyboards, drums, and harmonica. This one dude, this one dude is so talented, he plays all that. And, you know, some songwriters are great songwriters, but they're not great instrumentalists or singers. And some instrumentalists are great at what they do on guitar, but they're not the best songwriters. I mean, this guy seems to have it all. He, he's, he does solos. He's an awesome drummer. Um, his wife, Nancy, actually, Nancy Lee, plays bass on three of the songs. Um, and, uh, but, but by and large, Richard is pretty much playing everything. And there's a piano part on one of the songs, which is is very nice. I mean, he's he's pretty much good at a lot of instruments. It's a really impressive. Uh, Richard would go on to release 11 studio albums under this name, Richard X. Heyman, his name. This album, Hey Man, was his second album, was recorded in 1990 and released in 1991. It was recorded at Ocean Way in Hollywood, California. Additional tracks were recorded at Sorcerer Sound in New York City. And it was released under the Sire record label. Sire, like I said. Um, I actually saw him live in the 90s in a little restaurant bar called the Sidewalk Cafe. It was on Avenue A in the East Village in New York City. And uh, he actually lived in the East Village with his wife Nancy back then. And he may still live up there, I don't know. But so he probably just walked out of his apartment carrying his guitar and a hemp and walked a block or two to the gig. And he just walked right on back. He probably lived like within a stone's throw of the gig. But it was cool to see him and hear him. He was, you know, tall, skinny guy, long hair. He looked like a rock star. His presence, you know, he felt like a rock star in the room. 
Um, but it was a good gig that night. It was really cool. It was such, it was a really small room they played in, so very intimate setting. I'm, I'm glad I, I got to catch him live, and his wife was playing with him that night. Um, so, is that all I have to say? Yeah, well, his last album was released in 2017, and it was called Incognito, and that's actually a nice album, too. A lot of people, when they're young, they release great stuff, but when they get in their 50s or 60s, their stuff is just kind of crappy, and you wish they never released it. I don't think that's the case with Richard. The Incognito album has actually um, got a lot of good stuff, and I'd say it's worth checking out. All right, let me play a little bit. My favorite song is Falling Away. Check it out on YouTube or, or Google or, no, don't, DuckDuckGo. Um, don't use Google. Um, Falling Away. And it's my favorite song by him, actually. But because my CD is so scratched, I'm not going to play that tonight. So I'll play a couple more. This one is called Private Army. Private Army, awesome song. Uh, my freaking dehumidifier comes on in the middle of my perfect video. This video is going perfectly. And, it, and that just ruined the whole thing. I mean, did you hear the drums there? He's really, really good. All right, let me finish this off because this is so unprofessional. I'm so mad at that thing. I'm going to fire it. As soon as I stop this video, I'm firing my DVD went by. So that's a little sampling. I'll try to yell over my dehumidifier. Great album. Go get it. Put it in your collection. It's worth having. You'll thank me. See you guys later.